Hello student, welcome to our third lesson. In this lesson, we are going to look at Charles Law. Now, to illustrate the Charles Law, we have the following diagram. We have a round bottomed flask and we have the water index. The purpose of this water index is to trap the gas that is inside here. We have the capillary tube, we have the stud, and now you have the air that is inside there. If you look at our diagram, we are holding or you are touching the round bottomed flask with your hands. So what is happening? Now the flask is glassed firmly and the water index observed. Now when water index rises, when the flask is held and falls, when the hands are withdrawn. Now when it is held, it implies that the gas inside is getting the warmth from your hands. So the temperature is increasing. And as the temperature increasing, the gas is rising and forcing the water index to rise. So that is why now we are seeing that the water index rises when the flask is held and falls when the hard are withdrawn. This shows that the volume of a gas increases when the temperature is raised. Then from there we can have the second experiment or the second illustration where we have this as the setup or the diagram. We have the thermometer that is here, we have the gas tube, then we have sulfuric acid. These two are combined or they are attached to a meter rule using the rubber bag. We have the staler that is to stir the water and now we have the wire goes and the source of heat. So we are heating the water bath and then stirring so we are not heating the gas directly. And by so doing, by stirring, we are ensuring that the gas inside the tube is get it it is getting uniform temperature now we proceed as follows introduce concentrated sulfuric acid deep into the gas tube to trap air in the tube then number two attach the thermometer and the ruler using the rubber band as shown in this diagram after that you're supposed to assemble the apparatus as shown then record the room temperature and the corresponding height remember before you start heating get the temperature at room temperature and then get the corresponding height. That will be the starting point. Then from there, you're supposed to heat the bath and record the temperature and the height of at a suitable temperature intervals. Then you're supposed to fill the table depending on the readings that you get. That is the temperature you're starting with the room temperature, you increase and then you get the corresponding height. Then from there, we are supposed to use sulfuric acid. We have seen that we are introducing sulfuric acid in our gas tube. What is the purpose of this one? It is acting as a pointer to the volume of the gas. So you can be able to get the, the volume or the height because this one is acting as a pointer. Then number two, it is acting as a drying agent for the air. This ensures that the air that is trapped does not contain any moisture. Then number three, it is used to trap air. Those are the three uses of sulfuric acid. Now, the pressure of the trapped air, you are supposed to note that that pressure must be constant. Remember, we are talking of Charles' law. And that pressure is now the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the acid index. And this will remain constant throughout the experiment. Now, before taking the reading, we are supposed to stir the water bath so that the temperature of the gas is equal to that of the water bath. And remember, we are using water bath so that now we can have uniform temperature of the gas. Now we are supposed to plot a graph of volume. In our case here, the volume is corresponding to the height. So we are plotting the graph of height, but our height is the volume against the temperature. We move to observations. As temperature rises, the height h, that is the volume, also increases. And when you plot a graph of volume against the temperature, it is a straight line, but it is not through the origin. Remember, we started at room temperature, so there was a certain temperature. That's why now we are starting at that particular point. But as you increase the temperature, the volume increases. The two, we can say that they are directly proportional. So the graph has a positive gradient, and this shows that the volume is directly proportional to absolute temperature. When you extrapolate, you find that the graph or the line will cut the temperature axis at negative 273 degrees 
cell shares. That's what we have here. Now, as at this temperature, the volume of a gas is assumed to be zero. Remember, we are extrapolating and it is cutting the temperature axis at negative 273. So at that particular point, the volume is assumed to be zero. And this negative 273 is the lowest temperature a gas can fall to and we call it absolute zero. Now the scale that is based on absolute scale or absolute zero, we call it absolute scale or Kelvin scale of temperature. Now when you plot a graph of volume against absolute temperature, it gives a straight line through the origin. Remember, we have seen that this two, negative 273 degrees is absolute zero. So if now you consider the temperature in Kelvin and then you start from zero Kelvin, then you will have a straight line through the origin. So this shows that the volume and the temperature are directly proportional. But remember now we are talking of absolute temperature. So what is this absolute temperature? We can define it as the lowest particle or the lowest temperature a gas can fall to. And at this particular temperature, the matter possesses zero energy. But this one we are saying that it is theoretical because it is not possible for a matter to have zero energy or to have zero volume. So theoretically, we are saying that it is the lowest possible temperature that can be attained by matter in the entire universe. But practically, we are saying that it is not possible to attain this temperature. And that is why now we said the ideal gas is the only one that obeys gas law. Then from there, we can state the Charles law. And this one states that the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to absolute temperature at constant pressure. So mathematically, we can say that V is directly proportional to T provided the pressure is constant. So if we replace the sign of proportion, proportionality with an equal sign at a constant, we get that V is equal to KT where K is the constant of proportionality. When you divide through by T, you'll get that V over T is equal to a constant where V is the volume and T is the Kelvin temperature. Therefore, we can say that V1 over T1 is equals to V2 over T2. Where V1, T1 are the initial values of volume and temperature and V2 and T2 are the final values of volume and temperature. Then we can move to Kelvin scale of temperature. Now, we can get the relationship between the Kelvin and Celsius scale. We have seen that absolute zero temperature refers to the lowest temperature a gas can fall to. And the value is negative 273 degrees Celsius. And this one is equivalent to zero Kelvin. So it implies that zero Kelvin is equal to negative 273 degrees Celsius. Therefore, this one, it means that the Kelvin scale of temperature starts at negative 273 degrees Celsius and therefore to change Celsius scale to Kelvin scale we just need to add 273 that is temperature in Kelvin is equals to theta in degrees plus 273 and to change from Kelvin scale to Celsius scale we do the opposite that is we subtract that is our Kelvin scale minus 273 will give you temperature in degrees Celsius. Now, when we are doing calculations of gas laws, we always ensure that the temperature is expressed in Kelvin in any calculation. So we move to examples. Number one, convert the following temperature to Kelvin. We have negative 40 degrees and the other one is 55 degrees Celsius. So we proceed as follows. We have negative 40 plus 273 we have just said that you just add 273, you get 233 Kelvin. Then number two, you have 55 degrees Celsius, you add 273, you get 328 Kelvin. Then number two, convert the following values of temperature to degrees values. We have 45 Kelvin, 300 Kelvin. So we proceed as follows. We subtract now 45 minus 273, you get 228 and now 300 Kelvin minus 273, you get 27 degrees Celsius. From there, we can move to characteristic of ideal gas. Now, remember this ideal gas is the only one that is having zero 
volume at absolute zero temperature. So, what are the characteristic? One, ideal gas contains identical particles of negligible volume. Negligible means that the volume is almost zero. Then number two, there is no intermolecular forces of attraction between the particles. And then number three, molecules undergo perfectly elastic collision with other molecules and the walls of a container. Then from there, we can move to several examples. Number one, a gas has a volume of 20 cubic centimeters at 27 degrees Celsius and normal atmospheric pressure. So calculate the new volume of gas if it is heated to 54 degrees Celsius at the same pressure. So we proceed as follows. First of all, we light the values that are given. We have V1 as 20 degrees or 20 cubic centimeters. Then T1, you convert it into Kelvin scale. You add 273, you get 300 Kelvin. Then T2, you have 54 plus 273, you get 327 Kelvin. So we are looking for V2. So using this formula, V1 over T1 is equals to V2 over T2. Substitute values and then make V2 the subject of the formula. So by so doing, you get that the V2 is 21.8 cubic centimeters. So key in these values in your calculator and you'll get the value of V2 as 21.8 cubic centimeters. Then we move to question number two or example two. A gas A was found to occupy 300 cubic centimeter when the temperature is 47 degrees Celsius. Calculate the volume which can be occupied by the gas if the temperature is increased by 20 degrees Celsius and the pressure is kept constant. So we start by writing the values that are given. We have V1, T1, T2, and now we are looking for V2. What we are supposed to note is that the temperature is being increased by 20. So from 47, you add 20, you get 67. And again, you convert it into Kelvin scale by adding 273. So from there now, you write your formula. V1 over T1 is equals to V2 over T2. Then substitute the values and make V2 the subject of the formula. When you key in all these values in your calculator, you find that your V2 is 318.75 cubic centimeters. Then from there, we have example three. The graph shows the relationship between the volume and temperature for an experiment. This is our volume or this is our graph. As you can see, we've drawn and then we have extrapolated. So question number one, what was the volume of the gas at zero degrees Celsius? So at zero degrees Celsius is this one. So you get where we have this part. And when you get this one, it is 40. You can be able to see that it is 40. But the volume is multiplied by 10 to power negative 6 here. So therefore it is 40 times 10 to power negative 6 cubic meters. Then number 2, at what temperature would the volume of the gas be 0? The volume of the gas will be 0 when you extrapolate and get the the point where the line is cutting the temperature axis. So this is the point here. So if you are very keen, this is 200 and this is 300. So it means that this one from here to here is 50. So it will be at 250. So when you move to this one, it will be approximately 275. That is negative 275 degrees Celsius. Then number three, explain why the temperature in part two above cannot be achieved. Why are we not able to get this absolute temperature? One, it is because, it is because the gas will liquefy or it will, get, it will change the state from gas to liquid at higher temperature than zero Kelvin. That is, before you reach, it reaches this temperature, it will be already in liquid form. So the gases or the real gas, they will liquefy at higher temperature than zero the Kelvin or negative 273 degrees Celsius. Then from there we have the assignment. So the assignment are just testing what you have just covered. So make sure that you practice a lot. And remember, practice, practice makes perfect. So thank you and let us meet in our next lesson.